Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell. My name's Matthew Kidman, and today we're talking about housing and the consumer. They've been on fire recently, but have the stocks run too far? I've got Ben Rundle from NAOS and Chris Stop from Wilson Asset Management. Chris, we'll start with you. Boral, been a very cyclical stock over the years, had a good run. Buy, hold or sell? Boral's a hold, Matthew. We're getting close to the top of the cycle in, the house, in this housing cycle. We do know, however, they have been uh, selling assets in the last year or two, which uh, could be uh, accretive to shareholders over time. So uh, something to watch there, but uh, given where we're at in the cycle, it's a hold for now. Building material stocks like Boral? I'm still happy to buy Boral at the moment. Um, the house, the Australian housing business, uh, I think, is still going very well, uh, and the data supporting that still. Um, maybe we are getting close to the top of the cycle, but I think we do have um, some way to run. And in terms of the US business, um, the feedback that we've been getting from US housing players over there is, is very, very positive. So I think that'll help to support them as well. So I'm happy to buy Boral still at these levels. Something a bit more stable, paint, Dulux. Yep. Buy, hold or sell? Um, I've got a hold on Dulux at the moment, probably no real conviction. Um, you know, the bright spot for them has been their painting and coats division, which is about 70% of earnings. Um, you've had two uh, competitors enter that area recently though, with Valspar and P PG. Um, so, you know, the margin expansion and the revenue growth that they've had over the last few years to drive earnings is probably going to get a little bit harder for them. Um, so I've got a hold for the time being. Everyone's got to paint their house, Chris. Dulux, buy, hold or sell? It's a sell, Matthew. It's, it's expensive. What we're concerned about over the next five years for Dulux is in a rising interest rate environment, the uh, propensity of p consumers to want to renovate their homes are only going to decline, we think. And the Alesco acquisition has certainly uh, had a mixed response I think in terms of their ability to execute that deal throughout the various um, through the through the group so it's, and it's got a lot of debt which we can, which concerns us although their serviceability of that debt is okay uh, so okay let's go to the consumer and beds fridges computers everything you need in your house Harvey Norman had a terrific run Harvey Bye. Norman's a buy Matthew the consumer sentiment remains patchy however if you look at the ABS stats Furniture has been one shining light, and Harvey Norman is the biggest retailer of furniture in Australia. So uh, lack of competition in that space where they exist, and we think that uh, that one is well positioned to benefit from that thematic, so buy. Ben, go Harvey Norman. Yep, I agree with Chris. Um, you know, on top of furniture as well, electronic sales at the moment um, are running at about 10% versus 5% long-term average, so that also helps to support them. They've got a large um, property holding as well, so that supports the valuation. Um, yeah, happy to buy Harvey Norman at the moment. Something that hasn't been so super, but seems to have found its legs maybe in the last few months, super retail, buy, hold or sell. Yeah, it certainly hasn't been. They, um, they had a few issues there with uh, you know, over cannibalisation of their stores. Um, super retail at the moment does have levers to pull. Their stock turns are still below where their US comps are. Um, they've still got some store rationalisation, um, you know, and maybe there's some room for gross margin improvement, but I, I just don't think they're out of the woods yet. Um, I, I, I don't want to sell it, so I'll put it on a hold. Hold? Chris, are you a fan of super retail? Hold, Matthew. Great CEO, Peter Bertels has done a fantastic job. Uh, delivered with a rebel acquisition in the last few years where people have doubted him. Uh, I still think that there's more opportunity on the cost side for him to take cost out of the business. He, however, the like for like um, delivery has been mixed across the various uh, businesses now, and it's a much different business to what it was five years ago. So a hold for now. Uh, we'll watch it closely. Okay, Ben, electronics, JB Hi-Fi, very much a shorted stock yeah, yeah. in recent years, but wants to go up. That's right. Um, yeah, I look at something like JB Hi-Fi. They had a very strong start to the calendar year, um, and since then you've had a budget which has um, put through tax breaks to small businesses. So I think a lot of the small businesses are probably running out and buying computers and iPads um, and that sort of thing. And their iPhone 6 sales are pretty strong too. So I'm happy to buy um, JB Hi-Fi here at those levels. Chris, you a fan as well? No, I'm a sell on that one, Matthew. It's uh, had about 10 to 20% outperformance versus the index over the last three to six months. I mean, mature phases of its store rollout. And you want to own retailers when they're rolling out stores in the early stages of that. And for JB Hi-Fi, they're coming to an end for that, so sell. There you go. The consumer might be just coming to the end of his 100-metre sprint.